uh, thank you to everybody who's come back again and happy Mother's Day to um, all the lovely mums in the audience. I am, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jen, uh, Jennifer Earle, and I am an international chocolate judge and the founder of Chocolate Ecstasy Tours. So since June last year, as you'll notice from the piece of paper, the I've been running tastings, and this is number 10. So since October, they've been filled with chocolates. And I'm excited that this month there's an entirely new set of chocolatiers and they're all women, which is appropriate in, for Interna Women's History Month as well as International Women's Day. Although the caveat to that is one of them's made by a couple. Um, so sort of half in that case. Uh, so what's going to happen today is that firstly, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the bits that are inside your pack that are relevant for today, apart from the chocolates, obviously. And then we'll get to tasting the chocolates pretty quickly. I will, um, Martha will be the only one coming off mute to share her thoughts verbally, but I would love to hear what all of you think of the chocolates and what guesses you have. So go ahead and start using the chat, which is down the bottom. Um, it's totally fine if you don't love the chocolate. They, um, they know that like not everybody's going to love all of them. That's totally okay. And uh, the, once we finish tasting all of the chocolates, then there'll be plenty of time to ask me and or Martha questions. I'm sure you've got lots for Martha. So uh, without further ado, no questions. I'm not seeing any yet. So welcome everybody to the 10th Mystery Online Chocolate Tasting. Just like some music. Are you playing music? Just, just going to, how do I do this? Uh, Okay, we're all on mute now. <laughs> so, welcome. Um, I'd like to introduce you, if you're not already aware of Martha, Martha Collison was the Great British Bake Off's youngest contestant, and she made it to the quarterfinals as well, and has since published two cookbooks, and she's a regular with Waitrose Weekend and the magazine, I believe, as well. She also launched a puzzle company, which looks amazing. Jigsaw puzzles are fabulous baked goods. Um, so welcome Martha, thank you for coming. Oh, thanks for having me, this is so exciting. What a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Do you have a, do you have a chocolate preference? Oh, oh do you know, we start? I like, I like them all. I'm probably more of a, a dark chocolate person, but not too dark. I'm not one of those hardcore kind of 90 percenters. I'm, I'm in the 70s, <laughs> but oh, um, oh. I do it. Bye then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not, not eligible for this call anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, you're definitely fine. I mean, I think there's only mm, two, three dark chocolates in this. It's a nice mix. I try every month to pick a selection, which includes some that should be fairly easy to guess and some that should be a little bit more challenging. Um, and then a nice mix of textures and white and milk and dark for everyone. Um, for those of you joining for the first time, you will maybe want to use your um, the sheet of paper which came in your pack, which um, the space for you to write about the six chocolates. You don't have to write about them, you can just sit back and enjoy and eat them. I suggest if you're not having to share them with more one person or more, then I would recommend trying just half now and try half later because what you'll find is that if you taste the chocolates in a different order, you might experience, and experience them differently. So it's quite fun to do that. And that's why it's quite fun to write down your thoughts now and then compare it to later. The score out of 100 is entirely just for your own. We're not really judging them. It's just for your personal, which ones I enjoyed the most. So I will send you an email uh, tomorrow with all of the chocolatiers and the ch list of the chocolates and they'll have links there so you can go and purchase more from them if you'd like to. I would encourage you to do so. These are all small businesses so um, and hopefully you'll find a new a few new favorites from the ones that we try today. Uh, there's also some prompts for things you might like to look at so I'll talk about this a little bit more when we get to the first chocolate but they're the kind of things that we look at when we're judging chocolate. So I think you've been a judge before, Martha, for the chocolate Academy of Chocolate. Um, I've not done the Academy of Chocolate, but I do a lot of great taste and we always have a fair bit of chocolate to get through, which is a treat. 
Yes, I know. You're, you're one of the grand jury, I think, for the great taste, or at least you always get to be at the three stars, which I'm very oh, <laughs> I know, but it's the best day of the whole year. I can't even deny it. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy, I, I got lucky once and did great taste judging with, uh, and we had two three stars in the same session, which is like unheard of. Um, but I've done plenty of days where there's been like zero stars as <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> people Not all fun and games, people. I know, people always <laughs> say, they're like, that's the best job in the world. It's like, it is, but to find the great things, you have to taste the very worst things as well. <laughs> exactly, it's the same with the chocolate awards as well. It can be fantastic, except when it's not. Um, okay, so the other thing that you should have in your pack, and I have like, in my rush to get my daughter out the door, I have not got mine. So if anyone has their tasting wheel, they can hold it up for me. Martha, can you hold yours up, please? Yes, I do. You have your tasting wheel. Yay, thank you. Uh, so the tasting wheel is uh, designed mainly for dark, um, or mainly for single origin chocolate, but it is um, really helpful for today because it's one of the ingredients that you might find. So you might be to know that chocolate has more than 400 different flavor compounds. So it is more flavor complex than food, at more than food. Oh my goodness, I, can you tell I haven't slept well lately? Um, it's more flavor complex than coffee and than wine. And so sometimes it's difficult to figure out what those flavors you can taste naturally in chocolate are. So the tasting wheel is a tool to help. And you start at the center and can perhaps identify one of the groups or two. You could have a chocolate that is both spicy and fruity um, or floral and earthy. And then you move out to the next ring and then further until you can perhaps say specifically that it is pineapple and peppercorn that you're tasting. And the complexity that's added by tasting filled chocolates is that some of what you might be tasting will be coming from the added ingredients and some of it will be coming from the actual chocolate. So it is challenging to guess the flavors. So do not be shy about putting your suggestions. And cool. Okay. Um, any questions? No. Okay, so the very first chocolate that we're going to taste, I'm going to share my screen so that you can, um, where is it? Hmm. Okay, the very first one we're going to taste, I'm going to show you this just for now. It's the dome. No, no, wrong, 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 other one. The other dome, the yellow dome. Yellow dome. I did really try and get a good rest yesterday, but it clearly hasn't helped enough. These are all so beautiful, these chocolates. Aren't I've been they? staring at them since they arrived. <laughs> um, and this one is particularly stunning when you cut it in half. Um, Sally, did you get my message? Sally, Mark shouldn't eat this one. Hopefully you, you got that message. Okay, my PowerPoint's only just opening up now. Okay, I'm looking forward for you, to your Yes, I do love your background. Is that your kitchen, Martha? Well, oh, thank you. Um, it's kind of my kitchen overflow. <laughs> People are always like, that's such a great background. It's a great Ikea set of, sh set of shelves, but we have a very open plan. It's only a one bedroom flat that we're in. Very open plan living. So this is like kind of the dining area <laughs> um, with all of the baking ingredients in it. But I love it. Uh oh. Okay, uh, I didn't hear a word of that because everything froze. Hmm. Oh, bless. Don't worry. What did you say, Martha? Sorry. Oh, it's fine. No, I was just saying, this is my kitchen overflow. <laughs> we live in a, a quite a small one bedroom flat, which means that the cupboard storage is very, very minimal. So everything has to be on display. <laughs> I love it though. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's great background and it's nice to be able to see that I've, what I've got and make sure and like kind of inspires you to think of different recipe combinations when you're having your dinner or watching tv <laughs> yeah I would totally I would totally do that we have a, a pantry which I'm is the like happiest thing about my kitchen it was like my dream kitchen to have a pantry and so it's so nice to be able to open the door and see all the things that you can cook with oh, <clears throat> except I'm a chronic buyer and um, okay so oh lemon meringue lemon meringue pie I'm sorry I got it froze so I lost yes you can cut into it so if you have a knife, I generally recommend cutting because then you can get um, a good view of all of the um, potential layers that might be in the chocolate. And hopefully you've seen in this case, there are lots of layers. It's beautiful. It wow. is stunning, isn't it? This, this is, um, I think I've got the, oh boy. Oh dear. 
Hmm. Okay, the... Hmm. I don't even know how to... Oh, my. Um, yeah, so I still can't access the, the things. On. So this one um, has three layers. Yes, so I'm hearing lemon meringue. That is close, but no cigar. Mm. I feel it's like I'm getting cheesecakey vibes from it. It is very cheesecakey-esque, but Delicious. there is there is no cream cheese in it. Um, this is a lemon tart. Mm. Do we like it? Waves, nods. So if we were um, judging this chocolate, we generally, we would cut chocolates in half to judge them partly so that we can see if the layers are even as they are perfectly in this one. Um, and also to look how thin the shell is. So what you want with the really high quality chocolates is to have a really thin shell because um, it should really all be about the filling. So the shell is necessary partly for textural contrast. So you want a nice snap to the chocolate and the crack and crunch as you bite into it. But the thicker the shell is, um, the more the chocolate will dominate the inside, which is not always a bad thing, um, but it's it will extend the shelf life as well, which is handy. But generally it's more tricky to make chocolates with a thin shell. So we tend to regard it more highly if a chocolatier can make a chocolate with a very thin shell. It's not to say I'm all for all for thick chocolate if it if it tastes delicious though. So, but that one is particularly impressive with its lemon lemon curdy jam layer at the top, yeah. and then the white chocolate, and then the biscuit which has some creatine in it as mm. well, which is what makes it extra delicious. And um, so, creatine um, is the kind of waffle and um, dried waffle, a bit like a Kit Kat wafer, <laughs> which has that toasty wheatiness that is particularly Moorish. Ah, well done, Emmy. <laughs> it's um, good skills. Uh, so <clears throat> I would suggest after this one, if you have got some, um, I don't, I wouldn't normally start with such a like zingy flavor, but I figured it was good to wake your palates up this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And because when you're tasting chocolates, it is hard, you actually, you, you would think that you would taste the most subtle thing first, but oh, I'll get to the, person who made it in a minute, sorry. Um, you would think that you would taste the most subtle thing first, but actually your palate warms up and gets better at tasting after a few chocolates. So a bit like having an amuse-bouche before your dinner, um, it helps to kind of get, get all the juices going and get you better at tasting. So that one is made by number six confections, uh, which was started by John and Hattie, which is the couple, <laughs> the chocolatiers in, in this pack. Um, they are both chefs and they are based in South Devon, but their kitchen making the chocolates is in Gloucestershire. And um, yeah, so they started, they were put on furlough last March. And so they started making these chocolates since, since then. So they are selling them on Etsy at the moment and uh, they have a beautiful selection. So they have um, uh, raspberry and hazelnut cookies, um, this one's with, there's a Thai coffee, so it's got a condensed milk layer on the top and with a milk chocolate coffee cream. Yeah, um, all in these beautiful domes with layers and yeah, you can definitely tell they're made by practiced chefs. <laughs> Oops, Natasha, naughty. <laughs> Eating half of them, yeah, but I totally, totally understand. Um, okay, so the next shop, like I said, have a tiny break after that one, I would, because the lemon, might dominate the next chocolate, which is more subtle. And um, so the next one that we're going to taste is the, I, I can't believe I spent hours working on this PowerPoint presentation and I can't get it to show. Um, it, it's this um, dome, which has the white specks on it. And I'm gonna, while you're tasting that, I'm gonna have another go at getting my PowerPoint presentation to work because um, yeah, I'm upset.
anything. Any thoughts on this one? It's so smooth on the inside, isn't it? Such a silky it image. I'm going to join him. Caramel mm. coffee, Mars bar. Mm. It does taste a bit like a incredibly posh. It does. Bar, it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad me like it. Yeah, definitely caramel, kind of toasted notes. Hazelnut Milky Way. Oh. These are great guesses. Lacuma, Jandia. It does taste like kind of like it's got lacuma in it as well. And um, for those of you who don't know, lacuma is a, a root um, which uh, is used as a sweetener. And when it's dried out and it's turned into a powder, it's native to South America. Mm. I think it is anyway. That's where most of it grows now anyway. Interesting. Mm. And okay, so I will tell you, I'm really struggling with the, my PowerPoint presentation, which is upsetting me no end. Um, this one is um, a hazelnut ganache, hazelnut gendria praline. Uh, so many of you were correct. It really does have that kind of malted -y Mars bar kind of taste to it, though, which um, is definitely coming from the um, the buttery in this. That's anyway, it's amazing. Um, so this one is made by. Uh, I'm gonna mimic this correct. Sorry. Um, this one is made by Bella. Bella Chocolate. Actually, her name is Anna but the chocolates company is Bella Chocolates. And they, um, and Anna is, has been only been making chocolate for a few years as well. And the, she does mostly classic chocolate. So like Dolce de Leche, and there's a red berry ganache and she does some rocher, like the clusters uh, which have waffles and um, honeycomb and yeah, lovely, delicious oh, things that like that. Wow. Yeah. Very good kind of TV snacking chocolates. Um, so it's um so with praline you can have praline that's crunchy or that is totally smooth. So traditionally a jandouille is chocolate and hazelnuts ground down so that it's a complete paste, a bit like Nutella. And the proper jandouille in Italy is not covered in chocolate on the outside, so it's traditional. And then for it not to have an, a coating, um, but then it is usually has much more hazelnuts in this, so it tends to be a lot heavier in hazelnuts than chocolate. It was originally created in order to stretch the cocoa to go further because hazelnuts were grown in Italy and um, more readily available and cheaper at the time, although questionable now. And it, it would typically be more fudgier than this one, so this is much more like a ganache kind of style praline. Um, it's really subtle, the hazelnut in this one, I think, actually. But it should, if you had the, the one that's kind of blue with the blue spots on it, with blue and white, mm -hmm. that's the one we've just tried. Okay. So next one uh, we're going to taste is the, this one here. So it's another dome, which has the white, orange and red and yellow. Wow. On top of it. So, so if you have, have a knife, I would recommend cutting this one because it's nice to see the inside. I have cut all of these and taken photographs, which is on my carefully created PowerPoint presentation. Aww. <laughs> do you have any tips for cutting, Jen? Like, do you saw across or do you just cut straight down? What's your recommended? A very sharp knife directly across the middle. So it's really important if you are biting chocolates that you should bite them in that way as well. But some chocolates you kind of need to eat the entire thing, like... Um, you know, I would warn you if they were going to be too runny in the middle. Okay. <laughs> but if, just, if you bite the top off dome, sometimes like if we'd done that with the first one, you would have got just all the lemon and none of the biscuit. So yes, with the, it's the one, not with the, it's a darker chocolate one with the red, the red and the white, not the milk chocolate one with the orange. They both kind of have crosses on them though. Is that helpful? Mm. Is that clear? So it's dark, dark chocolate with white and red. Mm, oh well. Wow. 
Still trying to send my. Okay. Very dark cherry, black forest ghetto. Yes, the shorter one. Thanks, Liz. Marmalade. Connecting. That's quite a tricky one to work out exactly what it is. It's much kind of deeper and darker than the other ones. Mm. It's um. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> why did I do that right before I spoke? <laughs> It, this is the one where what I mentioned at the beginning about the chocolate influencing the taste of the mm. um, of the whole experience is really very true. So the only flavour added to this is in the tiny little bit of jam that's at the top of the the chocolate. Awesome. Um, but the chocolate has a lot of flavour on its own. So. Mm. Yes, yeah, so flavoursome. It's hard once you've looked at the colour to be able to be kind of completely unbiased, isn't it? <laughs> it's so true. It really is. Um, I was saying this on one of the private tastings I did in the week, but when I used to work um, as a food buyer and our whole like retail team, the like, entire food department, there was like 100 of us had an away day and we did lots of things as teams and one of them was wine tasting. And we all wrote down the, the tasting notes we got from a red wine and then the ones we got from a white wine and uh, then discovered that they were exactly the same wine. And yeah, <laughs> all these people with sensory training still picked up black currants and oak from the red wine and then and got completely different flavor notes from the white, white wine. So it doesn't matter how experienced you are, you can still be misled. And mm -hmm. okay, so Padre, how interesting. This is... Um, it is blood orange, oh. <laughs> but it's, I totally understand, like there's definitely <clears throat> cherry and kind of savory earthy notes, but the chocolate is Madagascan. So quite often you get those red, red flavor notes from, uh, from, from Madagascan chocolate. So it makes sense that a lot of people are picking up on those kind of cherry flavors and yeah. Yeah, and blood orange has quite a kind of <laughs> lovely cherry raspberry tone to it, doesn't it as well? Yeah, it does. It does have like a slightly different and note to just regular mm. orange too. Okay, time to take a sip of water, everybody. And <laughs> um, I don't know if I, I put this in my suggestion, but it's often a good idea to have hot water. It tends to kind of like melt away the chocolate more easily. I actually have tea, which is kind of cheating, but I've tried this before, so I feel like I'm allowed. And um, who made it? Thank you. This is where I need my, my PowerPoint. And um, this one was made by Sarah Hartnett, um, who uh, her chocolate company is conveniently called Hartnett Chocolates. And she has only started last year as well. So Sarah has been a chef for more than 20 years and has won many, many awards for best chef. She was the head judge in 2017 for the Academy of Chocolates, Academy of Chocolate, which is where I met her first. And she has been an ambassador for Barry Caliber. And so she was traveling the world, helping to teach people how to use their chocolate. Um, but with travel stopped last year, she decided to launch her own business, which is, um, yeah, going really well. So there was, she also has a rhubarb with white chocolate and her praline was excellent as well. I was really, it's always a struggle to choose chocolates from people because there's always several I want to choose, but I don't want you to have an entire box of one style of chocolate. It's not just because people have different preferences, but it makes it more fun, right? Yeah, the rhubarb and white chocolate does sound, yeah, it was good. Um, okay, so, but she wanted to make some tweaks to it. So we, we, we went with the blood orange. The uh, next chocolate that we're gonna taste is the square one with the pattern on it, Ooh. which I think is the only square one. So it should be quite easy. It's got little, some stars on the top. Beautiful. Nice crisp, like kind of crunchy sound when you cut that one in half. Yes. 
mm. and it looks pretty cool inside as well. So another one with a very thin shell they all have had so far. Smells really nostalgic. Before I, re I haven't even tried it yet, but it's got that kind of, <laughs> it reminds me of something. That, like a professional taster, it is always a good idea to smell whatever you're tasting first, because sometimes you can smell things you can't taste. So once you taste something, it's quite different. So there's certain flavors that are much more obvious through your um, orthonasal passages. So smelling through your actual nose versus your retronasal, which is what it tastes like when we have it inside our mouth, because most of what we experience as taste is actually our sense of smell. And the other thing that can help you if you're trying to figure out what something tastes like is if while the food is in your mouth, chocolate in this case, if you hold your nose for a few seconds and then um, and keep chewing and then let go of your nose and sort of breathe out normally through your nose, then you will be able to taste more intensely. It's so good. I love the saltiness. It's so like pretzels, um, those little kind of, yeah, I love dipping salted pretzels into kind of brownie batter or anything chocolate and it just reminds me of that. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, I love all these suggestions. I uh, what are what are local wafers, Sharina? Peanut, kin Kinder Bueno, Toblerone, Ferrero Rocher, hazelnut biscuit, poutine, popping candy, Kit Kat, <laughs> salted praline. You guys are pretty good. I mean, none of those actual things. There's no <clears throat> there's no confectionery inside this chocolate. Excuse me, but it does kind of taste like there is. I'm moments away from getting my beautiful PowerPoint to share with you, just as we get to the <coughs> final two chocolates. Bum, bum, bum. Download. Um, okay, I'm, am I missing any further guesses? Okay, so this one uh, is um, made by Holly Chocks who is, and I know I haven't told you what it is yet, but I'm going to, um, and she is a chocolate engineer. Um, so she actually has an engineering degree and she graduated 10 years ago and worked for one of the big retailers as a um, district manager and then went to work for Cadbury, which I like totally want to interview her at some point. And she was like so important at Cadbury, she got to be flown out to Australia to teach the Australian Cadbury team how to work the caramel and um, she was working on the whisper bubbles, um, which just sounds amazing. Um, and uh, so then she set up, after starting her family, she set up her own business and she actually has a chocolate shop in Wiltshire. So you can go and visit to buy when it's safe to do so. And the each month she comes up with seasonal chocolates. And so this month is an afternoon tea theme. And this is the scone praline. So she has a, her standard, standard praline is a chewy, crunchy one with like a layer of, which is just so, so good. Um, but we thought we'd give you something seasonal instead, but do go and buy her chewy praline. Or if you buy them, buy this, make sure you buy the chewy praline. But the, um, it's similar to this in terms of the praline, but it has a chewy layer. But so this praline also has her homemade scones crumbled up into it. I love that, like a buttery um, English scone in a chocolate. That is genius. That's so unique, isn't it? I've not heard of anything like that before. Yeah, I think I just need some jam now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thing is, there's naturally cream in it. Clotted cream. <laughs> I think it's kind of hard to tell that it is scone, though. Like, mm. Because, like Barry said, it's um, because once you've dried out scone and crumbled it in, it, it's just... Um, yeah, like wheat and um, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> delicious. I have, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, okay, another sip of water, if I may recommend. And then um, the second to last chocolate that we're going to try is the gold gold medallion, the gold dome. Oh wow! That's so. There's two left. We've got the tall dome with the cross on it, and the the gold, which has the pattern underneath which is quite pretty as well. Amazing. <laughs> I like Julie. <laughs> um, so the, um, if you're curious, that pattern um, comes from when you make these, you make these particular chocolates by um, a mold that has indentations, spherical, semi-spherical indentations 
And then when you pour the final chocolate on the top to seal the filling, then you place a acetate sheet. So if any of you are old enough to remember overhead projectors, <laughs> showing my age, uh, then that would have a colored cocoa butter printed pattern printed onto it. So that's what this is, colored cocoa butter. And when you set it on top of still warm chocolate, when it sets, it sticks and imprints onto it. So pretty cool. Um, pineapple, passion fruit, oh, got a shock. Wow, yeah, definitely tropical. Very aromatic. Mm. Wow. Mm, peach, cherry. Sorry, Natalie, it's the gold, the gold, the shorter gold dome which has the yellow pattern on the other, on the base of it. So the short one, not the tall one. It reminds me of um, the cocktail. I think it's called a porn star martini where it's the Prosecco with the passion fruit together. Cause it's got that kind of bubbly like mm -hmm. as well. That is my favorite cocktail. <laughs> it <looks> so good. <laughs> it does. I was like, so we, um, it, it seems pretty, pretty, um, pretty unanimous here. We're getting some, I kind of get the peach as well. Mm -hmm. and the cherry but most of most of you are correct in uh, yeah, mango grapefruit interesting most of you have got it right so it is um it is passion fruit um and it really like this as soon as i cut into this the smell is so like just mm -hmm. cutting into a fresh purple passion fruit um on the farm that i grew up on there's a fact you may not have known about me um we had passion fruit vines and so now I find them horrendously expensive from the shops, but I used, we used to have like so many of them that we'd just spend, my mum and I would spend an afternoon cutting them and scooping out all of the pop to freeze them so that they would last longer. And uh, it just, if the second I cut into this just brought back all of those memories of doing that, which is a nice thing on Mother's Day. Um, but, and the chocolate on this one, so it is a passion fruit chocolate. So it's a passion fruit ganache. There's no, um, cream in this one but there is a little bit of amade white chocolate which is kind of, kind of has a similar effect to mm. cream so it does have dairy in it it's not dairy free but um you, for those of you who haven't been in one of my tastings before you can make um ganache the filling of chocolate out of uh, liquids other than cream traditionally a ganache the filling for a truffle or a filled chocolate would be made of cream and chocolate but you can make them with fruit purees with wine with whiskey with just plain water um, so this one is made with um, a very special chocolate that's come all the way from Ecuador and is run, the company that makes it is also run by a woman. Um, and uh, her name is Susana Cardenas, who some of you in the audience who have been in the chocolate world for a while will know. Um, she, this is her company is called Cardenas Chocolate and she is Ecuadorian and the, the all of the cocoa sourced really and in a really incredible way to make sure that they're looking after the forest for years to come. And so the chocolate itself was made by Kerry, uh, Kerry Witt, so chocolates by Miss Witt. And Kerry's been making chocolates under that name for, um, since 2012. And she's won lots of awards from the Academy of Chocolate and is a judge sometimes as well. So for the Academy of Chocolate, chocolatiers are often also judges. Um, and so that's the another great example of how the chocolate can influence the flavor because that chocolate from Susanna has so much going on on with it afterwards. Interesting. Good, good descriptions. Yeah, I generally prefer passion fruit chocolate, passion fruit with the milk or a white chocolate, but it's nice to see Kerry using um, Susanna's chocolate. Um, okay. The final chocolate, again, you might want to, there's such a challenge trying to pick an order for these chocolates where they mm -hmm. don't um, overwhelm one another uh, or, con you, yeah. And so that's why I suggest if you are not sharing them to try and taste them again at a different time to make sure they all get their best, the best out of them. So uh, the final chocolate is the Tall Dome. Um, and I'm gonna, so pretty. It is another really pretty one. I'm really longing for this to be a hot cross bun because it looks exactly like one. 
I'm going to share my screen now because I can show off my, my work. Look! Yay! Um, yeah, sorry, this wasn't ready at the beginning. Um, so I'm going to zoom through while you're enjoying that one. I'm going to zoom through. This was the first chocolate. <laughs> Look how pretty it is. So that was lemon. Smells like cockroach. Yeah, I even put pictures of them all. This is Anna from Bella Chocolate, the hazelnut praline. I didn't have a picture of Hattie and John. Sorry, guys, if you're on the call. Um, and see the little bit of orange jam, blood orange jam at the top of, this is Sarah. And this is the scone praline. This is Holly, the engineer. I really like how her, um, her top is, she's very color coordinated with the branding. <laughs> um, and this is um, the passion fruit chocolate from Kerry. I'm sorry, I kind of I've cut off. That's Cardenas's branding. It's either, I don't know if you can see it or not. And then this is the six chocolate, so. Mm. Well, just my photos of the cutting through the inside are not necessarily the greatest. I will. It's amazing. It's got, I've got a couple of whole uh, currants or raisins in mine, which is so unusual. That's, that was the trouble about whether you, if you had to share it, because I think, yeah, it depends <laughs> on which, I don't think there are many of those inside them. I got mm. lucky. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, um, so Natasha, they are all female, except for the first one, which is a couple. So it's Hattie and John. But yes, there are females involved in all of these businesses. And of the, so this, the single origin chocolate that Kerry Sauce is also a female owned chocolate company as well. Mm. Hey, yeah. This was, um, yeah, I thought this one might be a, a favorite, which is why I put it at the end. I thought this one might be a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. Emily Dickinson's black cake. How cool. What's in the black cake? Um, I'm, I'm intrigued. Has anyone else made it before? Oh, wow, you cut the raisin exactly in half. Oh. Um, hot crust bun, rum raisin, cinnamon, nutmeg. Oh, you're good. Well done, Liz. Um, can you feel? So, yes, you were right, Martha, and many people in here. This is a hot crust bun. Um, so, um, this chocolatier, I really, really struggled to decide with her range of chocolates because they were all um, so good. Um, her, she makes a pistachio praline, which is just sensational. Um, but because it was like the Easter period, and at the time when I chose these, I wasn't sure I was going to do an Easter tasting as well. And um, so I chose this one because I thought it would be our one chance to have a hot cross bun and it was the most appropriate time. But I do recommend buying the uh, pistachio when you buy some chocolates from um, this chocolatier. And her name is Maya, so I like her very much. <laughs> and her the chocolate company is called the New Forest Chocolate Company, which incidentally is also where Kerry makes her chocolate. So we have two chocolate companies from the New Forest today. And I will share my screen so you can get... Oh. Here we go. Mm. Uh, yes, I don't know if either of them have shops though, so but they might let you come and collect from them if you go and have a holiday in the New Forest. It's a very pretty area. Um, but, um, that is my... So, <laughs> you may have heard some coming to try it, excellent. Um, oh. That is a good question. I'm quite sure there is no actual bun in it, um, just hot cross bun flavored. But I have the ingredients in front of me and yes, no actual bun. Very, very good point. Thank you for making me double check that, but I, I thought I had checked it. Yes, no, no wheat in that chocolate, just all the flavoring. So it was nutmeg and cinnamon as um, I think it was Liz picked up on. Um, and there is candy peel as and raisins as a few other people. 
picked up on. So, no actual, no bun, just all the flavorings of the bun. Oh yes, Kerry runs workshops. Kerry's on the call because she bought a pack and is tasting them along with you all. Um, the, um, uh, do we have favorites? I believe we've got through all six already. It's too hard to pick a favorite out of all those. They're all so different. They are. Oh, hang on. I was, the, um, the lot of brandy. Am I getting the description for black cake? And we did some picking for black cake. I'm going to need to come back to that. Lemon tart, passion fruit, hot cross bun, the last one, passion fruit, square one. I love seeing that they're all quite different. That everybody likes a different one. Lemon dome, gold dome. I think the, the scone one has a high recommendation from me. I really enjoyed that. You will really, really love the, the so the, um, the, um, the praline, chewy praline that um, Holly makes is just insane. Like it's just, like it reminds me of um, like a bit like a Twix, like something like very nostalgic, like the kind of things you get, would get at school. <laughs> um, but you know made with better quality chocolate. yeah <laughs> the best the best version ever of a school playground treat <laughs> yes exactly um so kind of, oh this is so cool that everybody has a different a different preference i'm i'm loving that that is awesome so um that is all of the chocolates so if you didn't finish them feel free to like nibble the rest of them while we're talking or you know have a little break and 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 try them again and maybe you'll favorite will change. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Martha or any more questions about chocolate? Oh, here we go. Martha, how have your baking habits changed over the past year? I oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. I think the whole nation's baking habits have changed. <laughs> I think everyone is baking more often, which has been really lovely to see. I think that was the beginning in the first lockdown, obviously there were some real low points for us all, but seeing pe more people get in the kitchen baking things from scratch they wouldn't have thought of making before was just really heartwarming and it was brilliant as a blogger and a recipe creator to have so much more feedback on people making recipes and enjoying them. But I found store cupboard baking has been the real change because it's not obviously been as easy to get fresh ingredients or kind of do all sorts of fancy things and sometimes you don't want to do all sorts of fancy things just for you and your partner or you and your immediate household so really nice simple store cupboard bakes have been my go-to's. Have you seen more people baking from your like recipes did you really notice that like especially last year? Yeah, massively. I mean, yeah, baking normally peaks at Easter and Christmas and the rest of the year is a little bit kind of random. But first lockdown, just like number of views on my website, like quadrupled the amount of kind of wow. people giving me in images of bakes and just people really finding like a simple joy in food has been something which has been just so lovely to see. That um, did you find you change like were you trying to like you said about store cupboard was you also aiming to write recipes for store cupboard so that it was better for everybody or was that just like for your own simplicity? Um, <laughs> I think there was just a massive outcry for I haven't got any eggs and I haven't got any butter and I haven't got anything fresh. What can I possibly make? Does anyone remember the, the egg and flour shortage? <laughs> Feels like a really long time ago now, but it was quite a challenge to think of new recipes. But um, it was really good fun. I actually did a whole series on my um, blog and on my YouTube of store cupboard bakes of so things like cornflake flapjacks and cinnamon bun scones and a homemade honeycomb where you don't need kind of eggs and uh, what else was it? flour to make, which was really fun. Um, I will check those out. I yeah, the the um, I managed to get a load of flour from Hod Me Dods, um, but it was yeah this the like ancient grain flour, so not like super awesome. The baking. I, in the first few months, yes, yeah, I wasn't doing tours or these tastings. I baked a lot of chocolate, vegan chocolate brownies, and then lost the recipe. Hmm. Um, um, I made it up and tried. The first, the first version I think was the best, and then I kept trying to tweak it, and then I then I lost the recipe. Very annoying. And um, oh yeah, has anyone made the millionaire shortbread recipe from Martha yet? And um, I would definitely send you the list of the chocolates afterwards um if there's something specific you want like the photograph or something then i will also <laughs> send you that what is your favorite bake martha 
Oh my goodness. I feel like my yeah. favorite cake. It changes all the time. And um, I'm really lucky that I get to write recipes as part of my job, often to a brief, like we want you to make something with this ingredient or with this focus. Um, so I find my favorite is constantly changing. Um, but something that I always go back to and get comfort from is a properly good chocolate cake, I think. Not any of those kind of weak chocolate cakes which just have a little bit of chocolate, hot chocolate powder in. I'm an absolute no to that. It has to be proper chocolate cake with real chocolate, good quality cocoa powder and it has to taste like real chocolate. <laughs> I get quite annoyed when it doesn't. <laughs> no, I, I will re very rarely order chocolate cake at a restaurant or out at a cafe because it's often so disappointing. <laughs> I agree. It's so disappointing. It's so rarely the same I find with chocolate brownies in a restaurant is that you can get incredible ones from some bakeries or great homemade ones but so often they just don't taste like chocolate or they're really dry and it's just a letdown. <laughs> yeah I went to a really excellent bakery recently and I bought a selection of their pastries and their chocolate brownie at least what the staff told me was a chocolate brownie. <laughs> it tasted like nothing. Like the <clears throat> the pastries, the like croissants were fantastic, but the chocolate brownie, I feel like they'd made a mistake. It was like a fine, tiny bit gingery, but really like it was brown. It looked like it was probably a, a, a um, supposed to be, it had some sight of cocoa powder, but it was. Really, <laughs> yeah, they look yeah. at it. That's brown. That's a brownie. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, bullion brownies from Sheffield are fantastic. If you haven't had those. So we had um, Ma um, Max's chocolate in uh, one of the tastings last year when we were tasting bean to bar. And uh, yeah, I asked him to send me some brownies in the pack and they were sensational and now I need more basically. Um, uh, Elizabeth Kerr does fantastic brownies, EK Bakery as well, which are really good. So is, I assume you've got a chocolate cake recipe in one of your books or on your blog. Martha. Do, yeah, there's, a, there's actually a chocolate cake on the front of my second book, which is called Death by a Chocolate Cake. <laughs> it's this kind of really intense chocolate sponge um, made with buttermilk. And then it has a whipped chocolate ganache icing, which is probably my one of my favourite things to do with chocolate is to whip a ganache because it just makes it like a chocolate mousse. And it means you can take a really dark chocolate. And by the time you've whipped it, it people think that it's going to taste really sickly and like a milk chocolate when they look at the cake. But as soon as they taste it, they realize, actually, no, this is proper dark chocolate and it's got a really nice balance to it. Um, okay, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the I was going to ask, because you mentioned about having to come up with like you because you we've discussed this before when we were when we were once when we met in person once <laughs> we met in person many times but one of the times when we were actually in physical presence of one another um the about having to like constantly come up with recipes with when you write a column like is it actually easier if somebody gives you a brief than being able to just create any recipes you like I personally do find it easier with a brief um, because, yeah, obviously I've, yeah, I've been so lucky to write for Waitrose in particular <laughs> in the last five years. And I just keep thinking, how, how, is there anything else left to write about? How can I possibly think of another recipe um, that either hasn't been done before or that I haven't done before? But it's amazing how kind of food trends come and go and actually being given a brief and saying, oh, we want you to write five recipes based on eggs. It kind of, sends your brain working afresh again which I think is amazing because often you just think I'm too tired <laughs> I've got no inspiration then someone says eggs and it's like oh well, actually an egg custard tart with this would be great or maybe baked eggs with a kind of pesto or a chamula or something and you just start thinking completely differently about the basic ingredients yeah because that's something that I've read books about creativity and that's you like one of them says you start with like one random word and then think of five words from that and then try and use those five words to come up with Mm. connections to what it, the problem is that you're thinking of and when I used to design recipes um for as a job but like not for me for the company mm. and when we were given a theme by marketing it was a lot easier to come up with ideas and if we were just told come up with some new burger recipes and um, oh I was going to ask you this question as well it seems to be I'm not the only one curious have you had any baking disasters <laughs> oh goodness I think <laughs> If you're a recipe creator or recipe tester, you have a lot of disasters because <laughs> things don't always go to plan um, or you f forget things in the oven. Everyone does that. <laughs> they overbake or underbake, all sorts of things. The biggest disaster I've had, I think, um, 
it isn't an awful disaster because it wasn't it wasn't as much my fault but when I used to live at home with my parents um I made a wedding cake and it was my first ever wedding cake that I'd made I was only 16 and it was like I used to have a little cupcake business pre-bake-off when I was in my early teens which I'd sell to family and friends and right. they'd commissioned me to make a wedding cake I'd never done it before and it was like a giant um cupcake in a chocolate casing and then lots of hundreds of cupcakes underneath and I did a tester of this big top cupcake um, cake and I kind of spent all day working on it and I finished it and I left it on the side and I was like great I'm really proud of this it looks good I went next door and said to my mum I was like mum I finished can you come and look at it and she came back in and we had um, a big labradoodle um, who was almost a puppy back then <laughs> but fully grown and he had jumped onto the side <laughs> and pulled the cake off <laughs> and had his face very gleefully in the icing and it was just I'd spent all day doing it and I was <laughs> so upset <laughs> fortunately it was just a tester it wasn't the real deal so um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah at least you had did the test to figure out you needed to keep the dog away before yeah, you did yeah, the actual very much shut in a different room for the real thing <laughs> oh and um, he was okay right because dogs can't have chocolate I know, luckily we got in quite quickly, so he didn't manage to eat too much, but it had been knocked onto the floor, so it was in a bit of a state. <laughs> wow, three tears, Liz, that sounds amazing, dark milk and white. You're a great sister. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Um, oh, have you been doing any vegan recipes, Martha? Um, I've done a couple, but not loads. To be honest, I find vegan baking is a completely different ball game to kind of regular baking um, and there are so many people that do it so well that I've kind of gone right if you want great re vegan recipes go to the expert okay now um that that makes sense um, did, did, did the was did the cake that first wedding cake all go down well someone's it asked go down very well actually and a fun fact is that I it was a wedding cake for who is now my husband's brother but I didn't know him at the time and we met at the wedding so it did oh. <laughs> it went very well <laughs> Oh, that's so lovely. <laughs> it all connects all the baking yeah. and everything. <laughs> it comes down to cake. He said he jokes now and says that he went up, tried a cake and thought, right, this is a good cake. I need this person in my life. <laughs> I like his uh, I like his priorities and you know that's that's <laughs> that's definitely someone I'd be happy to marry, someone that was focusing on who could make good cake. Yeah. <laughs> um oh, do you have a favorite dessert in a restaurant? When oh. we you know, if you can remember restaurants, you remember <laughs> the places you went, other people cooked. <laughs> the time we went to restaurants. Oh. oh, I'm a bit picky with dessert in restaurants because I always like to order something that I wouldn't make myself at home. Um, because yeah, you just want something which is a bit unique or a bit different. So I'm really keen on things like semi fredo um, or something like a little baked Alaska or something like that if it's a more fancy restaurant but I also am a big lover of cheese so I have to have that kind of debate when it gets to dessert as to like no. which, <laughs> which there's one there's no debate you either have both or you just have cake I just have <laughs> yeah. cake and mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who made your wedding cake that's a great question Claire Oh, um, I was so lucky at my wedding. So we got married two years ago. I know the answer to this. Sorry. <laughs> and um, me, myself and the other bakers from my series of Bake Off, which was now, I think, coming up to seven years ago, um, have all stayed in touch. They're all really good friends. I have a WhatsApp group. So I put it out there and was like, does anyone want to like bring a cake I'd love a cake table rather than just one cake so if anyone would be happy to bring a little cake for a cake table I would love that and I'd said to them because I've made wedding cakes and I find them quite stressful so I said I don't want anyone to be stressed out so just make your favorite thing like don't make anything fancy just make like a Bakewell tart or I don't mind anything we're not fussy and then on the day I didn't see it until we arrived at the venue because they all set it up in secret and walked into the kind of reception barn and all 11 of them had made <laughs> these like full-on wedding cakes. It was like I had 11 wedding cakes <laughs> because they'd all just gone crazy. I should have expected as such because they're all <laughs> the kind of people that enter a national baking competition. <laughs> but we had this incredible like three-tiered chocolate explosion cake and these little rhubarb and pistachio cakes and one of them had decorated a cake to look like our wedding invitations. <laughs> it was crazy and it all got eaten because everyone <laughs> went crazy in the evening. <laughs> but it was so fun and it was so thoughtful of them to do that for me. I, I remember watching it on Instagram. It was, um, yeah, that was so, 
phenomenal. I was like, why didn't I get an invite to that wedding? <laughs> really <laughs> made more effort to become friends with Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Only disappointing thing was that anyone who's gotten married will know this, but we didn't really get to eat any ourselves because we were so busy talking to people. So I think we literally had one bite of the chocolate cake and one macaron and then, and that was it. <laughs> but everyone else said it was great, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I didn't really eat much at my <laughs> wedding either. Um, I don't think I missed any, if I missed any questions. Oh, uh, Lydia's asked, um, would you recommend using best quality chocolate in baking or not? Similar to like putting your best wine in the bolognese. Ooh. Um, I think it depends on what you're making. So if I was making something like a chocolate tart where the chocolate is like a real standout ingredient, I would use a really good chocolate because I know I'm going to be tasting it um, or a ganache for a chocolate cake where you're going to taste it separately. But if I was putting it into kind of a brownie or kind of making a chocolate pudding where it was going to be mixed with lots of other ingredients, I'd probably go for more of a mid-level chocolate. I try and always use something which is fair trade and ethically sourced because I find that quite important um, and it will still turn out that you know that you can trust the chocolate won't let your bake down <laughs> so it's kind of a base level standard but I wouldn't use my very best chocolate in like a chocolate brownie for example because I feel like often other flavors get added and you don't kind of get to recognize and appreciate everything that the chocolate has to offer. <laughs> I would definitely echo and agree with that um, and thank you for all your lovely messages I'm glad you're enjoying yourselves. Um, so um, if, if any more questions be I'd um, I saw one and now I've forgotten where it, what it was. Um, oh, have you, have you been doing any cook-alongs on your Instagram, Martha? I've not done some it. brownie ones. I've done a couple um, and I always do really enjoy them. I just <laughs> I find it so scary being completely live. <laughs> you just never we'll, know. To, we'll do it together. Will you, you tell me what I need to, what I need to have and I'll, I'll join you. <laughs> and I'll cook. You can just tell me what to do and we'll cook at the same time. I've seen other people doing it. It'll be fine. <laughs> then we can have banter at least. And if it goes wrong, it'll be funny. Yeah. It won't be wrong. <laughs> we should do that. Who's, who's, who's up for joining if we do that? Make a brownie. Or this, the one that the recipe that's in your pack. I don't know how complicated that is. Maybe I haven't. Um, oh. maybe I <laughs> no, you can do it. Setting, setting, setting myself up here. But yeah, maybe we should do it. We should do a call or an Instagram live and we'll um, make the salted millionaire. I'm not saying it right, am I? The, the recipe. Mean, yeah, that sounds fun. It's actually not that difficult because I use, I do a bit of a cheat step, which is instead of making my own shortbread, it's a bit more like a cheesecake base um, using crushed up biscuits. So it doesn't take as much effort to make as a regular shortbread. Oh, perfect. That sounds, that sounds, <laughs> I can, I think I can manage that, that as well. Oh, send the ingredients, Justin. I know what you're thinking. I like it. <laughs> I think he wants to help. Um, <laughs> um, so do you have any plans for 2021? I mean, are we are we able to make any plans yet? <laughs> and it's been such a bizarre year, hasn't it, this previous year? So I'm kind of just taking it as it comes. I'm really hoping that there'll be more opportunities to leave the house. Um, it's funny, even I work freelance and I work from home anyway. So when the whole lockdown happened, lots of people would be like, well, this is exactly the same for you. You work from home. I don't know if this happened to you as well, Jen. But actually, it's like, I used to leave the house. <laughs> I still yeah. used to go out to kind of events and networking things and run like kind of cookery <laughs> demos, food festivals, tutorials. And obviously nothing happened last year. So my hope for this year is just a little bit of normality to resume. Um, really missing interacting with other food lovers and um, people like that. So hoping for that. Yeah, I really want to start hanging out with people in person again <laughs> or in some parts of me it's just kind of like really do I do I I'm not sure I'm kind of getting nervous about seeing people in real life again um the um might have to wear shoes what yeah jeans ah. <laughs> yeah. it's um yeah I've been living in slippers for a year now so I had my foot operation like in February so I was already at home for a month before lockdown I had one day out and then we weren't allowed to go out that's a bit Bit depressing um so um I, i'll keep if you have any more questions please add them in i would just like to thank um martha for coming along and being such a fabulous special guest and sharing her tips with us as well um it's been such a pleasure to see your smiling face um i would also really like to thank all of the chocolatiers for producing all of these phenomenal 
the chocolates. The some of these companies, um, so New Forest actually only started in January this year, so it's so exciting. This British chocolate scene that um, they were making these incredible chocolates. And um, so, as you know, for the last well, some of you will know, um, since October, I've been selecting six different chocolates from six chocolatiers every month, um, and so. I'm going to be changing this up because I wanted to keep it going. But that's been incredibly challenging, trying to get six different chocolates that all work together. Um, so the switch up that will be happening from April with Easter is that each month it will be one chocolatier making all six chocolates. But as well as having a special guest, which for next month is Olia Hercules, who is or was on the call today um, and has joined all of them since midway through last year. Um, just of her own accord because she likes them. Thanks, Olia. Um, they, but the chocolatier will also be joining us. So we'll still have a special guest, but we'll also have the chocolatier as a special guest. So you'll be able to geek out and ask particular questions to the chocolatiers as well. And I'll make sure that within the six, there will be some chocolates that you would not be able to just buy if you went straight to the chocolate maker, chocolatier. And in this case, for April, this chocolatier doesn't make any chocolates for the public anymore. So if you want to try this person's chocolates, you will need to come and join us in April. Um, I haven't yet finished putting in the codes that are on your tasting sheet, which give you five pounds off. So I'm going to keep trying to enter those tonight. But if you're in a hurry to book, then um, text me your, or email me your code and I'll make sure I prioritize putting that one on. Um, oh, do you have a favorite chocolate egg, Martha? Oh, I was reading that and I was trying to think. I always try and go for a different one. Um, but um, this sounds like I'm being paid to say this, but I'm not. <laughs> the ones in Waitrose, they often do a lot of their own brand ones that have an amazing squiggle, squiggled design and they put lots of lovely things into the chocolate. Like they did a coffee one last year and a lemon one. And I just really like the combinations that they do. So I'd recommend those ones. Yes, I was asked that recently by somebody who's on the call. Um, and I would recommend the waitress ones as well, because I know the chocolate that they source generally is really good. Mm. Um, and then it's nice because they do lots of like interesting and different. Yes, the avocado egg, bring that back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you've got, you've got Nia into waitress. Well, we both do with Will, I guess. So we'll yeah, have to it was not with Will. Them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, I especially want to thank the chocolatiers because they've really, two of them had to attend funerals this week. And so after having said yes, said yes to producing the chocolates, um, I really appreciate that they followed through and sent them all to you all. So, um, uh, yeah, especially big thanks to those two chocolatiers that, um, yeah, sent those and my condolences. Um, if anyone has any questions about any of these uh, chocolates or anything else at any time, you have my contact details. And so I'm always happy to talk chocolate. Mm. Any more questions before we sign up? Martha, do you have any questions? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't think I do, actually. I've had such a good time. And thanks so much for having me on. My pleasure. Uh, <clears throat> a tempering chocolate session. Oh, I've been, I've been filming a, a thing for my... TikTok channel, which still hasn't started yet. All these plans I have one day. Um, but yes, I think we should do a Zoom tempering with a, uh, someone who's more experienced at it than I am. And um, I will, yes, I like these suggestions. Please send me any suggestions anytime. I'm happy to provide you with all of your chocolate fun. <laughs> right. Thanks so much, Martha. Thanks everybody. Thank you.